most enduring religions are very good for the religious community. Religious folks are always comparing their communities to bodies and beehives. I'm a biologist who studies bodies and beehives, and I'm here to say that that's actually not just a poetic metaphor. There's a sense in which religions and other enduring cultural systems organize human community and cause it to function like an organism. When Darwin proposed his theory, it was obvious to everyone at the time that if true, the implications for understanding ourselves would be just enormous. And yet, the way that was developed was such that evolution became avoided for most human-related subjects for most of the 20th century. From the very beginning, you had people like Kropotkin saying, uh, excuse me, but this theory is just kind of an expression of British individualism. <laughs> and the fact is, is evolution's not all about competition, it's all about cooperation. That was Kropotkin's line. And that tension, basically, between competition and cooperation and individuals versus groups has been a theme all the way up to the present. And in modern times, it has to do with the question of group selection. Can evolution evolve adaptive groups, adaptive societies, or does it merely evolve adaptive individuals? Charles Darwin, well, first he writes The Origin of Species, uh, but then he writes uh, Descent of Man, in which he tries to apply all these evolutionary ideas to humans. He knew even in uh, Origin of Species that cooperation, uh, altruism in the other animals is a problem for his theory. Not that he doubts that he can explain it, but he knows he has to and he's not sure how. First thing an evolutionist wants to know is, is it adaptive? Is it something that evolved by virtue of increasing survival or reproduction? Or not? Because there's lots of things that evolve, but they're not adaptive. So here's the crucial passage, which is very often quoted. Uh, when two tribes of primeval man came into competition, if the one tribe included a great number of courageous, sympathetic, and faithful members who were always ready to warn each other of danger, to aid and defend each other, this tribe would succeed better and conquer the other. Selfish and contentious people will not cohere, and without coherence, nothing can be effective. A tribe rich in the above qualities would spread and be victorious over other tribes. If you're going to say that the group is adaptive, that has to be by a process of some groups doing better than other groups. Okay, that's group level selection. Lower down, there's also the process of individuals doing better than their neighbors within groups. Okay, we tend to label that selfishness. And so that process of doing better than your neighbor undermines the process of cooperating as a collective unit. So individual level selection tends to undermine group level adaptation. If something is for the benefit of others and for society as a whole, we tend to call it moral. If it, if it benefits us at, while harming others, we tend to call it immoral. And so when you suppress selection within groups, selfishness and immorality, then the dominant evolutionary force is moral communities doing better than other communities. And natural selection is now operating at the group level. God called us to be in relationships with one another. Our church is like a family. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is failing to retaliate in response to a transgression. If you do something bad to me and I don't retaliate, then I have forgiven you. Oh, Johnny, it's us. And when you think of it that way, then it's a social trait, basically, which can be advantageous under some circumstances and very highly disadvantageous under others. The real challenge of upholding the dignity of humanity and really showing and living compassionately and that we're all on the same level is doing it with those people who oppress you. A shekel for the good guy. And what religions do, what any cultural system does, is basically tell you when to forgive and when not to forgive. People like to say that all religions embody the golden rule. Actually, that's not true. <laughs> if you define the golden rule in any, with any kind of specificity, you know, Judaism is not about the golden rule. It's about measure for measure. They revel in remembering this day as the date when Israel crushed its enemies. There's plenty of talk 
about revenge against the Palestinians. The key environmental variable is called existential security. Uh, you are lucky to live in an environment of high existential security, which means that you're safe and secure, you can expect to live to a ripe old age, you can educate yourself, you can wait until your early 30s to have kids. This is a situation in which there's a sense in which you don't need God <laughs> and you don't need much else in terms of active belief and, and organization. You can afford to be individuals, you can experiment, uh, you can try new things. That is the niche for liberalism. The gender norms and roles of the white middle class nuclear family structure are cis heterosexist because the social roles of women and men within this model are characterized as complementary opposites. I see it as a false representation of gender and family which emerged during especially racist, sexist, and classic time in North American history. When it comes to religion as a source of sociological orientation, you could say that the modern social sciences have adopted some of the cognitive functions that in the past were fulfilled by religion. They now help us to understand our place in society. This whole conference is about othering and belonging. I would say that's the problem of the 21st century. When we watch people being turned back from Europe, uh, when we watch people being uh, denied, and when we pretend we're not connected, we're in the process of othering. We're in the process of denying not only someone's humanity, but denying our own humanity. Now go to the opposite extreme of existential insecurity, such as the Middle East. That's the sense in which you need a, a very, very strong religion in, for fundamentalism in order to band together for collective action because your life and the life of your culture is at stake. I'm so happy to see that everybody is having a great time. Praise the Lord.